any time now. Are you, is, is there, there a button? button? Oh, there it is. There it is. Hey, guys. We're home. I don't know if you've been listening to us for the last, like, ten minutes or not. But if you have been, then hi. But I don't think so, because I think you would have been commenting about you hearing us and then not seeing us. So, what's up, everybody? I'm super excited about today. Number one, this guy's here. Who might finally, I mean, he was on a video, but I wasn't here. So, I didn't get to have, like, give you a hard time about finally showing your face to the world. Thank you. Yeah. So, everybody, this is Jeff. If you didn't know it, he's been here almost as long as me, but not quite. Not quite. I still hold maybe like a year. Maybe not quite. Liz trained me. I sure I did. I just stood behind him and said no a lot. <laughs> she did. No. 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 That button. Uh, no. I'm a really great trainer. Um. <laughs> anyways, there's a lot of history here. All righty. So, I am super excited. Today is um, a video from my beautiful New York trip because I was sitting on the subway. Um, what, Holly? There's an echo on YouTube. Oh, there's an echo. I, can't, I don't know how to fix that, guys. Echoes are not in my wheelhouse. <laughs> you guys just don't want to hear me just, coming back at you? Just listen with both ears. That way you can hear from both sides. Okay, it's on Facebook too, so it's got to be a... Tony looks like he's trying to figure it out. Okay. Twitch is working perfectly fine. Thanks. We should just all go to Twitch. We should just be twitching. Twitch. Should we all just... We are twitching. <laughs> Do our thing. Is everything... How are we doing? Don't worry about those other sites. No. Sounds like a cave. Caves are cool. I like caves. Those are fun. So if I turn YouTube on on my phone, will it echo the echo again? Probably. They'll probably get a double echo. How's it going? That way, if we make one nope. mistake, we can show it four times. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to go over. No, it's fine. Anything? Everything? Anything? Should I tap the, the microphone? Will that help? <laughs> testing, testing. One, two, three. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? How are we? All righty. So, in any case, so I was in New York, and I was sitting on the subway, and um, across me, there was this lady there who had this handbag that had this really cool um, design on the front of it. So, her bag um, was like a burst. So it had this really cool, Nick, do you want to go to the top camera real fast while you guys figure that out? Still echo. Dean says bad. So it had this really cool cutout on it. Luna, stop whining. Um, her specific bag was a, it was either a black or a really dark brown. I tried not to stare too much because it's New York and people aren't nearly as nice as they are in the Midwest. And I didn't want to get shot. Um, and so... <laughs> And so it had this really cool array. So the, the bag was a really dark black or brown. And then on the inside of it, it was this light tan color. Okay, everybody says things are good. So it looks like awesome. Everything is good. Cool. So uh, they were twisted. So the, they had this twisted array. Un the underside of the leather was this uh, kind of like tan cognac color. And then there was a patch sewn onto it um, in the same color as that array twist. And so it was this really neat design where this um, was almost like a sunbursting into the bag and then the bag panel was cut out. And so I came back and I was like, Denny, we have to do this. We have to try to, to, to make some product with it. And I figured a pillow would be really cool because um, handbags are complicated and we literally just got done with like three months of handbags. And so I figured maybe we should do something that's not a handbag. <laughs> and so I have done a couple little um, ones here. So just to get the idea rolling in my head, I did it this way with the rivet design. So I basically took a, I believe that this is just a 12 inch cutout. It's either a 10 or a 12 inch cutout. I think it's a 12, um, circle. And then, um, in the description of the video, oh, look, you can, so it is just a 10 inch. Just kidding. So we got a 10 inch. It didn't feel quite like a 12. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and so in the, in the description on YouTube of the video, um, there are a couple different links or maybe just one link to everything. I don't know how Holly did it, 
But in any case, there are I'll do that right now. either one link or a few links, or there will be in a minute, um, with the array pattern. So this is the large array that we will be using on the pillow design. Um, it is it is a 12 inch array. And then this one, the, the smaller one is a seven inch array. Now how I've designed it is there are a couple dotted lines and you can cut as long of an array as you would like that will work with your project. Um, so that's just kind of something that you might have to play with to figure out, you know, the size circle you want in the middle if you are tooling something. This one I just riveted down because I thought that that would be kind of fun. Um, I think it looks neat. Yeah, plus this leather was really firm, and so in order to twist it and get it to stay, the, a glue wouldn't hold it. And so I just twisted every single one, punched a hole all the way through, and set the rivet, and then I just worked my way around the circle like that. But today what we will be doing is we will be gluing them down and then uh, sewing a patch over the top because we are using this really awesome suede leather, which will turn and like stay down easier. Denny has tooled us this really beautiful center floral piece. That pattern is also attached. I just had Holly scan in Denny's um, tooling pattern here. So if you were curious to have that, that will also be available for you to download um, if you wanted to. So, so yeah, so we are making a 24 inch pillow. That's a big pillow. It is a big pillow. For I was just big headed gonna, people. Yeah. I was just going to make a little one. And then apparently Kevin came through on Saturday and was like, you should make a bigger one. So I was like, well, all right. So I went to the, <laughs> the good old FM store and I found myself a 24 inch round pillow form because rounds are fun. You know, we don't do a lot with rounds here. So I figured that'd be more fun than, than working with a square this time. Um, plus, Jeff is here to help us do the double loop lacing in two colors, and he's still working on dead ending it. So we're just going to go all the way around, <laughs> which I, I got, guess you would do with a square I too. Got two so. days to learn. He's got. He's gonna. He's gonna see if we can figure it out. I did it last night. Oh, did you? Yes. Hey, very nice. Yeah. So first things first, when it comes to pillows, you don't want a twenty-four inch circle to go with your 24 inch pillow because then when you put your pillow in it it's all flat and it's like you have too much excess you want your pillow to be really tight so we cut 22 inch circles that was weird i don't know what that was uh we cut a 22 inch circle which is what i tested here yesterday with some just cheap finished upholstery leather um and my pillow fits really good so that's what we went with yeah, yeah. you gotta stuff it in there you really yeah you gotta stuff it in here it's it's a it's a tight fit but then once you get it all finished it should lay rather nicely and be a nice full fluffy pillow that's what you want there you go jeff will take a nap because we won't need him till the end <laughs> all righty so first things first you need something to stick your array to. So since we're doing a pillow, I've got this separate round. I cut a, did I cut a 12 inch circle? No, a 14. So for my array, I, cause this is, is this 12 inches? Yes. yes. So my array is 12 inches wide from side to side. I don't know, can you guys see that? Yeah. So that's my array. And so I have a 14 inch circle to go underneath it. It's, it's just as long as it's a bit bigger than the array itself. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But this was just so we our cutting dies for our circles go in two inch increments. And I didn't want to have to hand cut a circle. Although I did. And using your scissors, I just all the way around and it worked quite well. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, I was I was quite pleased. Um, and then we have already begun to cut the array because that would take forever if we didn't. So basically, Denny, you want to tell them how you lined everything up because I think we did it two different ways you and me yeah I just found the center of, of this circle which we use one of these things for which is actually quite handy yeah, so we don't carry this but you could probably buy it at just like a hardware store somewhere mm -hmm. and then we just put a little silver marking pen in one side um and then you can just there's a, this is really handy yeah. if you don't have it's one a of these carpenter's compass a carpenter's compass yeah. and it is 20 two inches long. That means you can make a 44 inch circle. 44 inch circle with this thing because it's a radius. All right. So anyway, I, I just yeah. found the center and we use it, like she said, we used a clicker die to cut this center out with, but you can hand cut it if you want to. It doesn't matter. A lot of you probably don't have a clicker die that size. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> probably. But I just cut it out and I turned it over on the, on the 
The back side. The back side to do all my marking because I didn't want to mar make marks all over that pretty leather. And then I, uh, I usually don't use a straight knife, but I used a straight knife to cut all this stuff, and it worked pretty well, so I'm going to finish it like that. I'll show you. Just oh, yeah, because you went through, so he went through on his pattern, and he made dots. Um, yeah. Yeah, so he he poked little dots at the, at the uh, bottom of each one of these arrays, and I think also at the top, too. Yes. And then he took it here so that he could take his ruler and just cut yeah. lines. Right. Right. Yeah, I just used a, a little all like this. Yeah, I need to come over this way. We're going to crowd in here. You're okay. Good, yeah. Here I go. <laughs> I'm just going to use a box knife here to do this with. Okay, so this is the Venetian upholstery in olive. And then it's the Love Heart Paisley in gold is the um, suede. Actually, and I cut on a piece of poly board. Mm -hmm. but this cuts a lot better on this pound board. Probably because it holds it down. Yeah, it doesn't uh, crawl. Let me look, Andrea. Let me look really quick. What? Mm -hmm. Should we tell them about our circle fiasco that I already? <laughs> So I was I was prepping all this yesterday, and um, I got I got I got my circles cut out, and Denny had tooled up our our cute little um, piece on Saturday, and and he left a, a, a really wide border, which was awesome, and he he even drew a line where the border was. I don't like, know what I was thinking. There was there was a line there, and so I was like, all right, Denny, I was like, you're just gonna cut it on your line here because there's already line. We have to sew it down to the pillow. And so we were discussing how far in we wanted to make the array. So guys, when, when you look at these templates, um, I put in these dotted lines as kind of like from the center. So we cut, this is the center that we cut out. So, you know, from the center, you could have an array that's either this long, this long, or you could cut the full thing if you wanted to, and then only do a really small center. You could probably almost twist this twice if you wanted to. Um, also realize that when you twist this, you are losing length. So there will be some sort of length lost when you twist. <laughs> um, oh, so so don't cut them exactly because you want the patch to go over and then have enough room to sew everything down. Like when I made this one right here, I probably had about a quarter of an inch of of the suede underneath my lip here so that when I sewed it down, I, I caught everything. So you, you need some overlap. Overlap is, is happy. And so we, we determined how big... <laughs> of a center we're like okay we're gonna cut six inches we're gonna make our our center six inches here so that's this is the array that we're gonna cut and we're gonna cut out the middle okay so so Denny does that and he cuts a circle here which is fine that was that was fine but then he cut his little circle narrower than the line that he had scribed <laughs> around it <laughs> pardon me <laughs> anyway I didn't so we had a good laugh for a minute but it was still fine because this suede really it doesn't shrink too much whenever whenever you twist it. So, well, we should have plenty and it should be fine, but we were going to have more and this was going to be probably another quarter of an inch wider. <laughs> I think what she's trying to say is if it doesn't work, just <laughs> it's be, his fault. be kind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, All right. it, was a, it was a funny morning. All right, so, it's cut. Okay, so now the array is cut. So we need... Yeah. Okay, so what I did yesterday... And then also I made these really cute earrings out of my scraps as we should all make cute earrings out of our fun scraps yeah. so that you know if you guys make somebody a purse or a pillow just make them a pair of earrings to go with it and send it because that's always just cute and fun it's, it's, it, that's the good thing to do yeah it's, it's just you know don't waste your scraps sure. cut tiny earrings out okay so what i'm going to do is we are going to trade your place thanks 
so we have 12 inches here and we have 14 inches here. So that means I have an inch on either side yep. around my array. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply, I'm using Rinia today because that sticks the best to um, non-pore surfaces like the top side of this leather to this. And I don't have to worry about trying to scuff this up and make it look good. You will have to do some sort of lining because you can, once you get it twisted, you will see underneath here, which is what was kind of fun about this one is that I use this really, uh, the fun um, yeah, that's, uh, embossed leather and then you can see it underneath, yeah, which is just really cool. That's part of the deal. Yeah. That, that yeah, one you know, part that shows. Get that kind of see. And this one I'm going to make into like a rope purse. So I have the front and the back um, that I'll be putting together. Eventually I've got, this will be my gusset. So anyways, so one day I will complete this and I'll make it into like a little rope purse was my, was my plan with this. Cause after I finished just making, like testing my idea, I was like, well, that came out fun. Yeah. So I might as well do something with it. Alrighty. So we are going to glue all the glue. So you can go out about an inch away from it. Exactly. The, where I cut. Yeah. Right? So I'm going to find, this is the top of all of Denny's cuts here. So I'm just going to go around. And then this will secure this with a stitch. And you want to try not to get it on the cuts so that they can twist from the top as much as possible. How's everybody doing today? Everybody having a great Wednesday? Having a good time? I went fishing yesterday. Ooh, no, I went fishing Monday. Oh, okay. With Jeff? No. Nope. Oh. I was with my wife. Water. Oh, that is true. You took Mrs. Uh, my little rock collecting wife. <laughs> did Did your boat come back a couple pounds heavier? Yes, it did. Hers did. <laughs> Hers did. <laughs> I went with them once, and she had 40 pounds of rock in her kayak. Oh, for Pete's sake. And then started putting them in Denny's, too. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the park service is going to come after her one day, because they're not going to have any rocks because. left. Well, yeah. The side of the river is just going to be a beach. beach. <laughs> <laughs> just sand. That's it. Where'd you guys go? We went to Palm de Terre over the other side of Bolivar. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Did and you catch anything? I caught a few fish. She caught a few fish. Did you eat them? Not yet. We were going to yesterday, but we got involved doing a bunch of other stuff, and she didn't feel like it, and I didn't feel like it. So it didn't happen? We didn't. <laughs> yeah, it didn't happen. Yep. What kind of fish did you guys catch? I caught a channel catfish, a really nice one, about a two pounder, which isn't huge, but it's really nice to eat. And I caught a, a bass, about a 14 incher, and I caught a really nice crappie. I caught an array. We're doing arrays today, so I caught an array <laughs> of fish. <laughs> and, and I caught a bunch of little fish, but but those are the ones I kept. Those little sunfish? Yeah. Yeah, a little bluegill. Mm -hmm. I guess south of here they call them brim. Yeah. And that always confuses me when someone says they caught a brim. This is the that, brim. That's what I thought. Yeah. Brim is part of a hat. I caught, <laughs> caught myself some, some river trash. <laughs> they didn't steal your... <clears throat> Stringer this time. No, nope, no, nope, I had it tied. Somebody and I went fishing at Rockbridge. Yeah. <laughs> trout fishing. And I was having one of those days, I couldn't do anything right. <laughs> you know, first cast and I'm in the tree behind me. And I look over and Denny's already got a fish on. Okay. Uh, so I'm getting everything straightened out. And I look over and Denny's got another one on. And next time I look over, he's landing his third fish, and I haven't even cast again. And then all of a sudden, I turn around, and Denny's doing this. And he looks up and says, Bucky, where'd my fish go? <laughs> and they'd undone the stringer somehow and swam off. So <laughs> With my Denny, stringer. Yes. <clears throat> In unison, his three trout undid the stringer and took <laughs> off down the, the stream. Those are some smart trout. Smart trout. trout. Smart trout. Smart trout. Smart trout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hair on in there would be would be pretty cool. And I don't 
it would be hard to sew the hair on in this kind of application, but also, you know, we're gonna cover this one up, but to do hair on inside here, instead of just the printed leather where you rivet it down, that would be pretty sweet. That definitely, you guys should definitely do some of those. I love this. Plus you could just use it as a Frisbee and it'll just look really cool you when it flies. A, you can do the hair on for the full array. Would look pretty cool too. Where you, you twisted have, it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell them that yeah, this part could be hair on. Oh. You don't think that would be weird? Yes. <laughs> somebody <laughs> try somebody try the hair on in the array and see how it goes. I think it would be weird. Yes, but you could do it. You sure could. You can do anything. All righty. We're going to lay this down. You need a finger? I don't think so. Okay. Good flop. This is an important part is this table flap. <laughs> it's the most fun part, really, when you smooth something out. Right? Like and it sticks. Just, just nice. Okay. Boom. Oh, wonderful. So we are, we are lined. So when we're done, we will put a stitch line here, and then we are going to stitch this down to the middle. So we'll do both of those at the same time so we don't have to go back yeah, and forth. Do two machine deals. All right, and so now more gluing. So now what we're going to do to do the array is that we're just going to glue a section of these uh, little tabs at a time, and then I'm just going to flip them down. This Renia is really awesome, and um, it will stick to the surface without having to put it there. So. Oh, everybody. It looks like an eyeball. It just does kind of look like an eyeball right now. Yeah, it's an iris. Yeah. Iris. <laughs> it's, had... it's very pretty. It's been tattooed, this eyeball. <laughs> People do that. It's a little weird. Tattoo their eyes? Mm -hmm. Really? Have you seen that? Yeah, they'll no, tattoo the I whole thing not. black. It's real weird. I have not seen Instead of putting I don't want mascara to see. on? Uh, no, like their eyeball. Like they'll tattoo. It's. We, we don't need to go down that road today. <laughs> That's a weird road to go down. So are you just going to put the cement on the one side? You aren't going to put it on the green part? That is correct. So yesterday when I was doing this, thanks, got a little overzealous here, which honestly we're going to cover this up. So if you get a little overzealous in the middle, that's fine because I'm just going to put a bunch of glue down there. Anyways, at some point, we should probably do that. Oops. I could have gotten that. That's okay. But I let you, so yeah. that's okay. <laughs> okay, so we started here. And it doesn't, like it doesn't have to be the most secure thing in the whole world. It just has to stay. It just has to stay until you get it stitched. Exactly. And guys, we're going to be doing this kind of an array today where everything is one direction. This is the Andy array that I did yesterday where you turn each one of them is opposite of the last one, which kind of gives you that look. Yeah. So either either way you want to do it is it's fine. The other way to me is more interesting. The The white one? Yeah. Well, okay. To me, it is. And so the the only thing that you have to be sure of is if you want to do this style, you have to have an even number because otherwise you'll have one that is weird. So you have to. So I did not count these, although I did just duplicate this one. So there should be an even amount. Um, but for those of you at home, if you you should count it first. It's the fifty fifty rule. Exactly. You got a fifty percent chance of coming out right. All right. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna. That's gonna be like the ending of this. <laughs> <laughs> like the what? The ending when we lace it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got a 50 50 chance. <laughs> it's already looking good. Yeah. All right, look at that. I like it. And you just wanna make sure all these are just laying all nice. And we're gonna put some more glue on it. Are you talking about how dumb adult stuff is? Yeah, adult stuff is dumb. We really should educate kids more to enjoy their youth and time of limited responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> but when you get old, you get that again. 
That is true. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, when you're young, they expect it. When you're old, they expect you to still have some sense, and they don't understand you lose your sense. <laughs> <laughs> By they, I mean everyone who hasn't reached oldness yes. yet. <laughs> exactly. Because your time is coming, you guys. <laughs> The they's will become <laughs> the whatever it is. Yeah. You. I always tell everybody, you're only young once. You're old know. for the rest of your <laughs> life. I don't know how it's been working out this way, but my parents just keep getting smarter and smarter the older that I get. Yeah. I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Stinking parents knowing what they're talking about. Yeah, what the heck, guys? Having life experiences and stuff. Oh. The the mm-hmm. ba- the sixties and seventies band, the Birds. Mm-hmm. They had a song about that. It says, "I was so much older then. I'm younger than that now." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's gonna look pretty cool. I think it will too. I think it's gonna look really good once it's on the pillow and yeah. kind of you have yeah, this all has fluffed some, out. Has some. Yeah, Three dimension. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, these are definitely so the the width of these strips are obviously narrower than these ones. Um so you get a little bit more of a fine look about it. It's not as extreme. Well, the the length is just longer. It so is. you've got a longer twist there. Yeah. Also, I would say the the firmness, the hand of the leather that you're using has a lot to do with the actual appearance that you end up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I use, this is actually, this leather right here is our, um, some of our two-sided, the like Saffiano double-sided leather. And I know like if you buy the Saffiano bundle, you'll get this piece of silver and black in there, which is, it has this um, PU coating on the back of it. Um, and it actually, like, that looked really cool. And so we also have a decent amount. I don't think that this specific one has an item number, but you can call in and ask for it. Um, we do have, we do have quite a bit of it. And it's just this two-toned, it's this creamy, it's not quite white. It's this creamy color on the leather side, this really nice creamy pebble grain here. And then this is the back of it. And I actually had our splitter, I, I had him send one of these pieces through and he split it in half for me. So I had half back panel and half of the front. And so I used the split from the front to line this, and then I used the the back side of my split to make my pocket, and it turned out quite nicely. So, and here we go. Yeah, the the more contrast you have between the the flesh side and the grain side, the more of a color difference you're going to get, and the appearance is going to be different. Mm-hmm. This is a sticky process, guys. Yeah, but you're doing good. Um, I'm trying to not let it pull away too much. Like pull away from me so that good. I don't have a lot of don't have a lot of spare room. I have some spare room. I I cut this thing just perfectly. Uh, we have the perfect amount. <laughs> I can feel it. Yeah. I can't see it, but I can feel it. (laughs) Yes, Holly? Okay, so Ed Ed on Facebook, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) If you have a little bit more information, I can uh, link you something, but I don't know. I think he's talking about this. Spreader? Yeah. He's talking about the oh, silicone, the silicone brush. Uh, sorry, Ed. I will have that link. <laughs> Did 
She understands now, Ed. <laughs> Not to worry. Slow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, I have to let Did it tack up for a minute. Of course. <laughs> I tried that glue about a month ago, and I love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love. When I was making my knife sheath um, last week, I've just I've had the same bottle of Master's Contact Cement for forever, and I just keep adding thinner to it because I bought you know like a quart or whatever, and I just you know I make like one knife sheath a quarter, so it's not like I go through it very quickly, and uh, and so I I use it, and I thought I had everything glued up really well, but then as I was sewing through my um, my final stitch, my the back side of my piece and the lining that I had glued it to kept wanting to pull apart wow. as I was trying to push the all through. And oh my gosh, I was getting so mad, mm -hmm. so mad at my glue situation. And so I was like, next before I was like, before I make my next sheath, I'm going to buy a bottle of Rinia yeah. and use that because I do feel like it's just a really good one. And you only have to put it on one piece. Well, yeah, I mean, you and and it is a contact cement, so you you know you can put it on both, but it definitely it holds. It does a good job. And the smell is not as strong, which, you know, isn't quite as fun. Yeah. As you don't get as much out of it. Yeah, you? yeah. It's not quite the same gluing experience um, in a nice, closed, compact room that you typically get with your solvent-based adhesives. I mean, that's always just a good time. Yeah. Um, but, but this holds really well. To me, cement, it, that's it. Philosophical experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Denny. Let's not give those people out there you any ideas. You should opening a can of clear lack in your kitchen. <laughs> it ran me out. Yeah, I William, it's it's yeah, no good. I open the doors and windows. That's why they don't make it anymore. <laughs> we probably couldn't sell that to the prison systems. No, we? no, no, I, I think that's why we don't have it anymore. What is it? Clear lac. Oh, because they stopped making it. Yeah. The manufacturer. They were like, this is too hazardous for people's health. I think that was legitimately what happened. It, that's what happened to me, you guys. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it took me back to third grade and model glue. Yeah. yeah. Did they have bottle glue when you were in third grade, Jeff? Model glue, yes. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make an old joke, but you didn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if the shoe fits. I think we've talked about elementary school glue before. Uh -huh. Probably. It gets paste. Okay. It used to oh, come in yeah. paste, yeah. paste jars, like like uh, antique paste. Well, we mm -hmm. had a kid that would eat it. Yeah, that someone was saying the other day when you argue with someone on Facebook, you're probably arguing with the people that ate paste <laughs> when they were in elementary school. Probably, and still don't have anything else to do. <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, this part is super fun, and it goes real fast. <laughs> it's it's real great. Well, just think how fast it would have gone if you uh, riveted all those. The rivets took a long time because you can't you can't just punch your hole because well with this one you may have been able to just lay everything flat and punch all your holes because the suede stretches quite a bit but on this one um they shortened a lot when you twist them so I couldn't just go through and punch all the holes at once and then twist them and rivet it I had to literally twist each one punch a hole through it where it was and then set the rivet so it did it did take a decent amount of time to do this one but it's just it, I like the rivets I think it's really neat and especially if you like that would this would be a perfect application for the hair on because then you can see it. You could go through if you had a teeny little end punch and you could end punch these to where they looked nice instead of just straight. But you know what? With hair on, it's probably going to get covered up by hair yeah. anyway. So whatever. Yeah. So that, that would be a lot. I mean, you could do that if you want to do that. But 
you're just making more work for yourself. Which is all leather craft is. The, the more advanced we get, just the more work we're making for ourselves. That's, that's right. That's, that's, how we, that's how we make more money, is we make ourselves do more work. Yeah. All right. You're getting there. I am. I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm running out of space, like I'm not twisting close enough. I don't know. It'll probably, it'll be fine. I just might need to smush them together a little bit more. It's going to do this whole section where it's going to get through this. It's going to barrel right through. Yeah, you can just start mushing together now. Yeah. Oh, I forgot... Almost, but not actually, because I'm telling you now. Just giving a little shout out to Grant. He was in the store the other day and said he was going to subscribe and told us to do a shout out. So, hey, Grant. Hey, Grant. Grant. Eight, Hopefully you did subscribe and you didn't lie to us. Are you here? Yeah, he'll tell you. Yeah, he'll tell you. Very long. <laughs> yeah. He's a funny kid. I'll be serious. He's a lot. We're getting people like from everywhere well, popping into retail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, you know, it's vacation Whoops. time of year, and a lot of uh-huh. people make this part of their vacation. Guys, I almost twisted the wrong way. Oh, watch yourself. Can't have that. You pull a Denny on me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm laying down pepperoni slices. <laughs> We That's what you the, wanted yesterday when we cut the circle out. This it was. Out. I was. I had pizza. <laughs> the pepperoni pillow. The pepperoni pillow. <laughs> do, do. How are you doing? I'm. I think I'm doing great. We're about to find out, though. Yeah. The truth is. Dun 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 dun. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Oh, how Boom. much better could that be? Boom. Okay. We are lined up now. Please. Here. Take this. And Look tap, at that. Tap those all the way around. That's insurance right there. You guys. Insurance. Are you going to make me sew this, too? If you want to. We can flip for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a coin, though. <laughs> me neither. I think it'll be... There's... So, look at that. Mm, there we go. That can look pretty good. Yeah. Pretty yeah, that should... Good. That should just... Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slather glue all over the center, and then we're going to stick that down, and then we'll do our two stitch lines to secure everything. And then we'll be ready to hand it over to this guy to... Oh, well, we'll need to punch our lacing. <gasps> did you bring... La- you did. Uh, Good job. Did. Good job. Did. We got all the stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah, until it, time comes, then we'll say, oh, shoot, I forgot this. We did oh, almost no. forget the lace. <laughs> Denny had to go make a, yes. a trip for the lace. I do feel like a pastry chef right now. I'm just <laughs> spreading icing and You're the Julia yeah. child of the leather world. Yes. Just don't eat that though. <laughs> yeah, don't eat the paste. <laughs> it's water based. It's the glue is. Hey Chevy guy, you can download the tooling pattern for free. Yay! Chevy guy always wants the tooling pattern. Free. <laughs> oh, Holly, I forgot to have you print some and take them to retail. Oh, yeah, I forgot to. I'll do that then. Okay, thanks. Okay, so that should be good there. Scooch that over there. Put some glue on the back of this. Be sure you face that in the right direction. Yes. Oh, yes, for the circle. <laughs> I have been trying to like, like I'll, I'll rotate it, and then I'm just like, 
Like, it doesn't matter. It's a circle. <laughs> and what if you put the pillow up down, upside down? Yeah, well, you're, that's your fault. Yeah, that's that's the decorator's fault. Yeah. Just make sure when you take the picture. Whoops. Yeah, I got glue all over myself <laughs> yesterday when I was doing this. <laughs> I knew you'd have problems. <laughs> Jeff brought me tissues. <laughs> You want to make sure you get it glued all the way to the edge so it sticks, sticks down. Gosh, this veg tan really soaks up the adhesive. Yeah. Do, do, do. I don't know if you noticed on my cooling pattern. Mm -hmm. But I've got the tooling going in two different directions. I saw that, honey. Did you? Yeah. What's the vacation? See, the inside circle's going around this way and the outside oh, circle. Oh, I do see that. It's like a whirlpool. Yeah. That's fun. All right, we'll let this tack up for a minute because we want this to stick really well. I may have gotten a little extra up in here, but it'll be fine. I'm just trying um, to figure out how I'm going to do my stitch line there. How I'm gonna, well, I okay, I figured it out. Okay. <laughs> I think. <laughs> just stitch around it four or five times. Yeah, if, so if my stitch line goes like this, you guys don't worry about it. <laughs> Luckily, we're using a natural colored thread. You won't see much yeah, of it out there. And then, yeah, this gives you a pretty solid line to follow, but this one, which is why I cut everything in a circle, because then it was easier for me to finish. It'll be fine. It's going to be great. Yeah. yeah, I do. I love this Venetian leather, too. Like, this Venetian... For the backer, it's just, it's so, it's a distress upholstery, and it just feels really good. And it's going to yeah. break in really nicely. It'd be nice to have a couch out of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you can make your whole couch out of this, and then you can make all your pillows and accessories out of this. And it's just really gorgeous leather. I love it. Plus, you know, it's green, and that's the thing. So we got, what, 12, 14 different colors? We do. We have a lot of colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Glue I, drying. I think it's ready. Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, let's make sure I center this. <laughs> get get it correctly placed here yeah, in my circle. Yeah, right side up. Yeah. Don't go the other way. Go go with go with the flow. flow. Go with the flow when you're pushing it down. Don't go against the. Yeah. I guess this one there's no flow, flip, so you just have to over. push. Yeah, you don't want to flip them over. With the flow, we're going with the flow. Hi, Melissa. How are you? We know her. Dean, we are. We're doing the double stitch. We're going to start it. So this is, but on Friday, we're going to mostly be talking about the double loop lacing in the two colors on Friday. This one is half pillow, half lacing. Look at that, y'all. All right. Everybody should have one of these in their house. If they don't have dogs, that will eat them. My dog eats all of my pillows, so I can't have nice pillows. Especially one day I'll, a leather pillow. I bet they would just scarf that yeah, down. Yeah. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. It's really all about the stuffing on the inside. They really just like to sit there and pick the stuffing out. You'd have, like, solid pillows. Yeah, I could just have flat lumps. Like, I, yeah, like concrete on the inside or wood. Mm, that or sounds something. really comfy, Denny. <laughs> Alrighty. All right. Are you doing this? That went I faster guess. than I thought. <laughs> I had a fear this was going to turn into Denny, Liz, and Jeff, episode 38, <laughs> making a pillow. No, we got this. We got it. 
So we are using a class 26 and we've got 138 natural thread top and bottom. So class 26, 138 natural top and bottom. And hope it works. And we hope that it works. It should be great. Denny, um, what weight of veg did you tool that on? Uh, this is five to six ounce. Five to six ounce, Dean. You can go a little lighter if you want to. Four to five, it would be a little more pliable, a little more pillow-like. But... What does that mean, a little more pillow-like? <laughs> <laughs> a little comfier. Yeah, I don't really know if this is like a cuddling kind of a pillow. That's the type you hide when you have company because you don't want them laying, laying on it. Oh, gosh. Yeah, what happened there? Just keep going. No, I can't. This isn't good. Something happened. Guess what? There's a... Aha, uh -huh, that's what happened. Are you out of bobbin? No. Good. Thread spool was wrapped around it, so oh. I gotta pull out some stitching, you guys. Hang tight. I need to go Ooh, Sheila said, thank you, Jeff, for re recommending natural thread for belts. Oh. Sheila, Sheila Jones. Mm hmm. And Shelly. Oh, it is Shelly. Sorry, Shelly. The, the screen is small. Mm -hmm. I have to squint. I have vision correction. It's pretty good, but... When I took my uh, driver's eye test, mm -hmm. I didn't even have to wear my glasses. Wow. And I got everything right. Does that mean you're getting for, younger? It, yeah. 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 Can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> Except for the last... Uh, Sign. I said, that's the don't go in there sign. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like that response? That can apply to they a lot said, of different places. They said, well, that's not really the proper terminology, but we'll give it to you. So you say, well, I know what to not do thanks to the <laughs> yeah. sign. So. <laughs> Dean, I'm going to put a zipper in my purse that I make with this but probably not on camera. You're almost there. Now see, if I wasn't so attentive, I would have stitched this whole thing. But you know me, how attentive I am. Oh, you're so very So. Denny and I never get lost because we never know where we're really going. Well, that sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> My wife always says it doesn't matter which road you're on, it always goes to where you end up. It always goes <laughs> to where you end up. guys work in such a tight space we like each other yeah yeah we're good we're good friends here but it is a little with the sewing machine and the, and the three of us it was a little tight but that's all right on friday we won't have to have the sewing machine because it'll just be jeff lacing so it'll be not so tight <laughs> oh i think we can get one or two, two more people back here right yeah just it'll just be a big fun crowd too bad jacob's not here Jacob? New York Jacob. Oh, yeah. He would crowd right in here, the giant. Maybe he'll watch this one and he can laugh at us. He'd be laying on the table. He could just sit there knitting in the corner right here. That's right. He did. Mm -hmm. he, was he does. He's, he's to the point he's making his own. Um, he started to make his own yarn. So he's been buying like plaits 
of wool mm -hmm. from some place in Connecticut, uh -huh. and he's got a little spinner in his living room, mm -hmm. and he'll and he'll spin yarn. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, he says that takes a long time too, but he made a really pretty uh, sweater that I saw while I was there. He, he made a whole sweater. He made a whole sweater. Yeah, it was pretty neat. Hi, Tony. That's more better, isn't it? Yeah, that looks good. I tell you what, sewing machines, there's always a million things that you have to look for all yeah, of the time. Sometimes. Especially in this, when you're using the machine that you've got actually set up somewhere, it's not nearly so bad as this, where we transported it in here and then set it up, and we didn't, I just didn't think to look to see if the thread was going to come out of the spool all right. Yep. Probably just on the way, because he, he tested it before we came over here, but then on the way over here, the thread probably got jostled and it fell underneath the spool. And then you're just like, well, everything was working when I was out there. Suddenly it's not working anymore. I need to kind of make a mark if I can around here. You want to uh, put that in the middle? No. No. Well, well, maybe if I can. I probably can't. You might you might move it in just a little bit more because I don't I don't know if it's com it should be pretty close to even but yeah it's kind of right at the top. Oh, and we we learned about this thing is you have to have a wide berth to spin it, like twenty two inches worth. <laughs> You see it? Kind of. That's all I needed was just kind of. Kind of, sort of. Okay. There we go. A little bit of a line on there. Maybe in a different light I can see it better. <laughs> or not at all. Is that is that what you found? That's what I found. There it is. It'll come and go. Just keep turning. William, don't go there. He said that that design would look really good on a casket top. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you okay. missed our videos last week. We talked about making leather caskets and how biodegradable that might be and how expensive that could possibly be. Because it started out, we said, hey, leather workers, buy your headstone now and then just use the back of it for your leather yeah granite for your slab. for your granite slab and then when you pass away your headstone will already be ready and it'll be used it'll be like a well worn part of you you know so that was and then it just went downhill from there <laughs> way <laughs> our our hill was really steep and really fast and it had lots of ice on it <laughs> Hey! That's Whoa. even fairly round. <laughs> yes! But honestly, you can hardly see it, so yeah. it doesn't matter. It's going to be... It's beautiful. Yeah, I just thought this was the neatest. I loved it on the front of that bag, just as a fun accent. And it was... It's really quite simple, too. Like, you know, just have some fun with your contrasting colors. And um, it's not a... It's, a little time consuming, but it's not difficult. What do I do with the lighter? Um, Harry asks, what is the thinnest leather you would want to sew on a class four? On a class four? Yes. I don't know, Jeff. What do you like? Six to eight? I had a class three and I sewed two layers of four or five with one thirty eight thread. No mm -hmm. problem. But you know, they're not made for no. four ounces. It, so here's here's the deal. You can probably sew whatever you want on a class four. However, in order to get it to do that, in order to get it to go super thin, you're going to have to adjust the tensioning drastically. And then once you're ready to go back to heavy stuff, 
you're going to have to, again, mess with the tension drastically. And it starts to get to the point where the machine is the machine does not want to go back and forth. It's not happy with that. Um, and so if all you want to do is so this one project for this one thing and for whatever reason you're determined to do it on a class four, then fine, set your machine up for that. If you can get it to to do that how you want it, but like going back and forth is not happy. And that's like, that's, I think, I feel like that's the thing that people don't understand the most mm -hmm. about the heavy weight sewing machines. Yeah. You've got 30 minutes to get it sewing right. That doesn't mean you've got 30 minutes to get it back. Right. It may take you a while. And my class three, I never had to adjust the bobbin tension. <clears throat> But I talk to a lot of people that they're trying to use 69 weight thread mm -hmm. and they're adjusting the top tension and the bottom tension and they get it out of whack. Yeah. Yeah. That's a technical term. Out of whack. Out of whack. All right, Jeff. Whopper John. Do you want us to glue it up for yeah, you? Yeah. I, I thought good. if we glued like okay. that, uh, that'll get us. That leaves us enough room to insert the pillow. Trade your places. Okay, trading places. Well, I guess I'll go back to gluing. My Good job girl. Done. My job is done. <laughs> oh, this. If you see dye stains on the back of my headstone, this will be bad. I actually think that it's a really, like, if if it is your desire to that's be a, buried in life, like, I actually think that's a pretty cool, like. It's viable, viable. <laughs> Action. Right? <laughs> like, just pre-buy your headstone and use it. <laughs> and well, then, even if you don't want to be buried, make someone else buy it for you. Yeah, then it can just <laughs> go, you know. Um, we're doing a quarter inch seam allowance for... Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A, exactly a quarter inch, mm -hmm. according to my eyeballs. Hi, Luda. You gonna help? Oh goodness, I got loony kisses. You know what? I feel like Rusty would be on board for that that business venture. I think we should go into good, providing good. headstones, <laughs> aka yeah. like tooling benches. Springfield Leather and Monument Company. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Luna. We're going to do kitchen countertops while we're and, and countertops, <laughs> yes. Thanks, Jeff. Countertops, uh, memorial statuary. What, for the Kleenex? <laughs> <laughs> I actually brought them because of my allergies, and I figured my nose would let loose halfway through the video. <laughs> Guys, I know you're so excited about joining us for the gluing. It's kind of like watching paint dry, except it's glue. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's exactly, exactly the same. <laughs> Luna, you're going to get your pretty hair glued. <laughs> well, she did get painted one time. Mm -hmm. So when I was painting my living room, I had my my paint can lid on the ground, and she sat on it. And so her little butt was blue for like two months. Blue butt, huh? She had a blue butt. Because <laughs> she also is not a huge fan of baths. She'll sit there for me, but she doesn't love it. And so that just means that I don't tend to do it very much. She's self-cleaning. You know, dogs, they, they self-clean. They do. They're probably cleaner than people are. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times they don't smell like it. <laughs> she works on it a little bit every day. <laughs> She's working on it right now. She's working on getting dirty <laughs> yeah, so she, she can lick it all off. <laughs> exactly. Ew, Luna. At least there's no cat poop in here for her to roll in. That is That is her cardinal sin against me. Is that she sure does love to roll in that cat poop, and that is not fun for me. She loves to get her neck in it real good, and then just lodge it in the collars that she wears. It's it's not it's not wonderful. Okay, so that's that's probably about right. Yeah. Leave ourselves an opening because you got to put the pillow in, and it wouldn't be any fun to lace it with the pillow in the whole time. So we only want to do that part of the time. 
Again, our beautiful 22 inch circles. Man, I, I wish you guys could have seen me cutting these out with the scissors yesterday. Just Denny scissors are nice and sharp and I just found that sweet spot and I just phew, all the way around. That's good. It was quite and, fun. And another thing, when you're lacing an edge like this, if you aren't perfect, the lace is going to perfect it. Oh. And also, don't, this is the one thing that Kevin tells people all the time when they're lacing is don't get carried away with the glue because you got to come back up between the seams. So yep. I didn't really think about that, but I will try not to get carried away with the that's glue. That's all right. I think that stuff will, you can pry it apart enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's hope so. Otherwise, Jeff's well, that's Jeff's life problem. is going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> what a true friend. <laughs> Listen, true friends tell it like it is. Yeah. You know? Holly, I'm not really watching the chat too closely, but you want to, you've been doing a good job at letting me know when there's an actual question. So, okay, thanks. We're talking about the, the ruler, the compass. Again. Oh yeah, I think it was fun. I was yeah. I was working on getting my circles together yesterday, and I, I realized we didn't have any bigger than an eighteen inch cutting die. And I was like, man, how am I going to get a twenty two inch circle? And the strap cutting team came through for me. They just had that laying around back in their area, so it was quite handy. I think you can get those at most, uh, probably big box stores Lowe's. like Lowe's or something like mm -hmm. that. Probably yeah. carries them. Or you can put an awl or a nail or something in the center mm -hmm. in a piece of string. string. Yep, however what, long you want it. That's what I said yesterday. That is. And I almost did it, but then yeah. one of the guys came up and they were like, Liz, I have this. Drywall users, when they have to cut out a big round hole, have something like that that's got a blade on it. Mm -hmm. Are we about right? I yeah, think that's I good like enough. That's close. It'll be good. All righty. Stick Remember this too. to face it the right direction. Oh yes, yes. Got to make sure that we're facing the correct direction. Me to hold the half. Well, I was gonna fold it in half and just line up my my glue lines. I don't know, Denny. We'll figure it out. This is a really big circle, guys. This is two really big circles. <laughs> Let me hold that. Come on, guys. Everybody this, pitch in here. Yeah, you need a lot of friends to do this. <laughs> Just for moral support. Okay. Let me scoot it on the table a little more. Yeah. Whoops, whoops. No, I think that's open. Oh. Yeah, that's 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 the end Duh. of the glue. That's okay. We're good. <laughs> It's dark back here. I can't see from all the the glitty the glittering glare. The gold is shiny. You need your parchment paper. Everything that glitters is not gold. Remember that. I, I think that that's a song though. Yeah. Not all too. Alrighty, Jeff. Want to spin? <laughs> Chubby guy says he can't complete the project because he doesn't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we should put on the pattern. Friends well, required. If, mm -hmm. if, Six hands. Chevy guy, bring it here. We'll all help you. <laughs> 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 it's not pretty good luck, Chubby. Another way to do that is if you let your uh, cement tack up, mm -hmm. and you put a piece of paper or something under the biggest part of it, and the only that's what just pull it out a little at a time. I think that's what Holly was saying—the parchment paper. Oh yeah, yeah. See, Chevy guy, you don't need friends. You just need parchment yeah, paper. You just... <laughs> they said maybe you can just make mini pillows. Tiny <laughs> <laughs> <Or> pillows. <laughs> Make Barbie pillows. Yeah. The smaller the pillow, the less friendly Friends you need to be. Friends not included. <laughs> I 
I'm a little afraid that I stretched. Good. I think so. So, guess we can always trim later if we have a little bit of excess somewhere. But it should. All righty. Denny, you want to punch some holes in there? Yeah, Whoops. I will. We don't need that. It's there we go. All right. Let's Oop. see. Watch out. You're going to step on Luna's toes. Oh, Luna. Sorry. Let's see here. You're going to be starting from here coming around. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, we'll For, so whatever the top side is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Holly, you said that. This would be that. a really cool wall hanging. Yeah. Hello. Oh, wow. Really? Let's see. I think I could use I four feel like... <laughs> Yeah. I probably ought to put a piece of this is gonna get noisy, you guys. Watch out, Lynn, the fireworks are coming. She was that, a barking last night, and people in my neighborhood are already starting to shoot them off a little bit. Oh, yeah. And she just ran from window to window as they were popping, and she's trying to tack it somewhere. <laughs> Sorry, Luna. This isn't fireworks. No one's shooting at you. Like that, like leather pieces like this. We should do more art that are just tooled pieces. Yeah. Like it, you don't always have to be making something. You can just make pictures. And I know in the Sheridan show, you know, a lot of people will. That, that may be something we could uh, do in a video at some point. Is picture frame. Oh yeah. You did that in the bathroom on retail. Yeah. Oh, it would probably be easier to see it from the other side, huh? Well, remember the. The kangaroo tail that we had. Uh huh. I built a frame for. You sure did for the little like. What yeah. is this surprise? Yeah. Kevin did a picture frame, I think, for Becky once, and it was oak leaves, mm-hmm. and the relief on it was such it looked like he had glued oak leaves to a piece of leather. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Kevin is really good at that. Doing the three D. You know, horse head and his animals like yeah. coming off thing the fish that's one reason one thing about uh, Jim Linnell too he's a big fish carver and an embosser mm-hmm. yeah. he does a lot of that oh yeah guys so if any of you haven't been listening the last few weeks Jim Linnell will be at Springfield Leather the last week of July he will be here all week he will be doing our live videos we'll be doing some recorded videos with him and on Thursday, we will be hosting a class um, that he will be teaching in. So if anybody is interested, I know we have a couple people that send us an email to the live at springfieldleather.com um, last week or the end of the week before that or whatever it was that we first announced it. Um, but if anybody else has not submitted an email yet, you would be interested in coming to the class on whatever the last Thursday in July would be here at Springfield Leather. Um, shoot live at Springfield Leather and email us with your name and your contact information um, if you would be wanting to participate in that class. We're just kind of building a preliminary list of how many people would like to. Do you go all the way around? No, no. that'll be enough for you to get started. Okay, though. and then he'll do it later. I gotta find out where to start. It's up here, right there. Oh, you gotta start where you can end, right? Is that enough room? Yeah. That'll work. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. We can, it's just like stuffing a wildcat in a suitcase. We can do that. Stuffing <laughs> a wildcat in a suitcase. So. That's another one. All right, Jeff. 
One of Liz's customers sent her yeah, Archie. an email. Archie. Hey, yes. Archie, if you're out there, this is your video. And well, I talked to Archie on the phone once about a class 26. I think we all have talked oh. to Archie. Your glitter makes it hard to find the holes. There. I'm sorry. So, if you've never double looped lace before, there are several good videos. Denny and Kevin have videos on YouTube for Springfield Leather. And normally, we just take one lace and you go through the hole and then you go through what's called the bite. This is kind of different. We complicate things because we're having gold and what color? Ochre. 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 Yeah. So we've yeah. got, this is the new, for those of you that have not seen um, our kangaroo lace, we used to have like a bright metallics, but the foil would come off and there was issues mm -hmm. with it. So they discontinued the bright metallics and now we have matte metallic Alex. colors. Uh -huh. So this is the gold matte metallic, our new kangaroo color that we've had for, it's been a couple months, but it is a new, it is a new line. So yeah, so we're using the matte gold and the ochre, both in the eighth inch. Yeah, and I watched a YouTube video to where someone was trying to explain how to do two-color lacing, and to be honest, she really confused me, and I got to hunt around. There is a book on lacing. You can get this several different places. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot that was up there. And in the back of it, it talks about two-tone lacing. And number one, and this is going to be fun to lace because I'm used to lacing stuff that's a lot thicker and stiffer. And I'm going to have to watch how hard I pull my lace. I don't want to step on your nose, hon. All right. So the first thing you need to know is you always start out with your lighter colored lace. Mm, Jeff, you want to actually pull it towards you a little bit? Yes. How's that? That's, yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. Do you want this? No, I don't need that. There we go. You can see it better. And a lot of people, when they do double loop lacing, their first stitch, <clears throat> they bend that over and continue. On this style, we don't do that. So we take our lighter colored lace. I've went through the first hole. I skip the second hole, and I'm coming through the third hole. You want to make sure you keep your lace straight and it doesn't tangle. And that's tight enough. You don't need to pull it real tight. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with... <laughs> Luna's moving me. Okay, I'm going to come in with my darker lace and it's a shorter piece of lace. Because of splicing, we don't want to splice at the same point. We need... That hole was hard. I picked a there green leather for old man uh -huh. eyes. <laughs> Three. There it is. So I pull it through, I'm going to leave the same amount hanging out here, I'm turn my lace over, and I'm going to come up and go through that top. Once again, I don't want to pull it too tight, I don't want to pucker it, but I need to make what's called the bite, or the cross, hey, or the X. Now I can take. I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. I, I'm going to need sunglasses because. It's pretty bright, that It's gold. pretty bright. Let's zoom this one in so we can see it a little bit closer. Uh huh. You have to do it right there. Oh, I think I know how. Yeah. How do you think about it? Give me a second. Oh, you're good. I'm, I'm just having to do yet. this by feel. Okay. So, I got my dark lace. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Now I have a bite. Okay. I switch laces. So every time you switch laces, you're going to have to trace it down. 
Can you snug it up a little bit? Mm -hmm. See, I dropped it. Now I'm going to take my light colored lace. I'm going to go through this bike. Mm -hmm. When you do normal double loop lacing with one color, your brain's always thinking, go through the hole, go through the bite. But because we're dropping the lace and getting another one, it's really go through the bite and then go through the hole. Which got confusing to me at first. Are we getting mood lighting? No, we're just zooming in on you. Oh. So we can see it real good. Might want to. Yeah, we'll get there. it. There. If you use something like this, you can check and make sure you're not skipping a hole. So snug that up a little. There, I've got a bite. Then you got bites on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is getting bites today. Oh, hey, Nick, you want to zoom that in a little bit, too? All right. There we go through the bite. And it's very important on the X, the bite, that you get both sides in there. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. It's in a good spot. Just, just go forward. Half a bite. That's going to look good. Right? Uh -huh. we good tried... choice of colors, Liz. Thanks. We had the green fern, yeah. but the green and the, the Venetian on the back, they weren't quite the same color. They clashed. They did. They, it, wasn't, it wasn't the right tone. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to go with the ochre because it matched the, the Herman Oak patch that Denny had made. Is it ochre or ogre? Ogre. Uh, ogre. It's not ogre. It's not Shrek. Not Shrek. That would be another green. <laughs> Go through the bite. And I'll, I'll tell you now, working with a softer leather is a lot more difficult for me lacing than what I'm used to. Because I'm used to, when I lace on something, just give it a tug. Yeah. Um, Archie, so on Friday, Jeff will be coming back in and um, we'll be finishing the pillow. So we'll do a splice when we finish the pillow so that you guys can see how to splice with the two colors. But then we are also going to be doing a small project as well that will have a corner. Um, Liz is going to lace. Yeah. And so I will lace while Jeff, because we'll have to, we have to lace around this whole thing. We'll do a splice in the video, and then we'll show you how to finish and, and tie your two colors back in. And then we'll do another small product so that we can show everybody if that's the only video that they want to watch instead of doing the, the pillow as well. So Friday will be a little bit, will be mostly the, the double loop lacing, and we'll do a couple little projects. But I just really wanted to make this pillow, so that's what we're doing. I think it's going to be a neat pillow. I do, too. Uh -huh. I want to see all the pillows, guys. We're going to storm the world of home accessories. With leather pillows. You know, the, the most important part of lacing is controlling your lace because it can be a real pain in the rear if you let your lace twist on you and it turns upside down. There we go. That's, that's another thing that I found on when I lace is if I use a really long piece of lace, my lace starts to wear wow. out by the time I get mm -hmm. to the end and it, it kind of mm -hmm. stretches and gets it gets really limp and it yeah. thinner. Yeah. You know? And you wear it out. Yeah. That's why Kevin is he's so insistent that just lace with a yard, yard and a half at a time. Yeah, and the lacing classes that I've been doing with employees here. I've taught them, if you goof up, you're better off snipping off your needle, pulling it out, and reattaching. Because you take this needle and run it back through that hole, and you're messing your lace up. Mm -hmm. And that ends up causing more problems 
down the plus, road. It just takes so long to find like your needle when you're if you're lacing with enough to finish your project. Like if you were lacing with enough to finish this project, you would need yards and yards and yards of lace at a time, and it's going to take you forever to pull every to that, single yeah. yard through the hole. Yeah. Splicing is easy. Yeah. Compared to fixing twisted lace. And two-tone lacing does go a lot slower than one color. That's okay. We got time. Well, and we're just going to get this started here today, um, and then we'll come back on Friday, and we'll do, well, like I said, most of the whole video on Friday will be all the double loop lacing. We'll finish the pillow, but we'll also do a another small project just to show you how to start and finish again. And you know, if you get... So on Friday, we'll have everything set up a little bit closer, guys for the lacing so that it'll be a little bit uh, maybe more technical on Friday. So we've been doing a lot of double loop lacing in the classes that we have for employees. And when I first did a field note journal, with two color, I probably had 20 employees saying, ooh, I want to do that. And so now I've got 10 people going at various stages. You had to pick something so shiny and bright. <laughs> I did. Denny Am had I getting some, a sunburn? Denny had some plain leathers picked out, but I changed them yesterday. <laughs> she he, vetoed him. He did respond well, to my text message, though. That was exciting. He did. <laughs> That's a rarity, Denny. <laughs> well, I didn't see the one until late in the evening, so I didn't respond to that one. But then when you uh, showed me the leather that you picked, mm -hmm. I saw that in the daytime. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> So if you're going along and you realize you didn't snug it up enough, you can reach over here to your other lace and just tighten it up a little bit. And the other thing is when we're done, we set the lace. And that means taking a hammer and beating on it or a roller. And that can even it out. There's that hole. Denny, would you, or not Denny, but uh, Jeff... Do you think using a stitching horse for this would be, or is it just like laying flat is fine? Laying, you know, the longer I lace, the more I find out. And at home, I lean on the kitchen counter and I do it standing up. I used to try and do it in the Lazy Boy, but uh, I'd catch the lace on my knee or something like that at the end of the chair. You know, everybody's different. I could see doing it, but... The main thing is the front side always has to face you. We don't do any lacing, this type of lacing from the back side. Yeah, I could see using a, a stitching pony holding it up. It, it depends on the particular project, project. too. Yeah. Some, some projects you just cannot wrestle them you have to wrestle, wrestle them, them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way to hold them yeah somewhere steady because they're shaped so funny you yeah know? all right so denny we've kind of got uh eric over here has a project that he's working on he's going to make saddlebags out of some veg tan or possibly bridal and he was thinking about making an internal wax canvas dry bag but he was wondering what your thoughts about attaching the dry bag to the saddlebags would be I just do it with snaps. Okay. Make make the bag just a drop in a drop in dry, dry bag that you could do. That's exactly snap. what Chevy got. Just snap it on. Yeah. 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 That'd uh, be the simplest, you know, the most straightforward and the easiest to to get where it fits very well. Right. You know. Yeah. Let's see here. What size lace chisel is it? This is an eighth inch eight lacing inch. chisel. So you use 
whatever size lace you're using, that's the size of chisels that you want to use also. Yeah. I brought a a, a two prong, a three prong, a four prong, and a, I think a six or an eight prong in here. But a four prong is about what what we have to use on on an arc like that. That's yeah, about yeah. As, that's about the. <clears throat> but if you were lacing this, you might even have to go to a two prong, yeah. or it's kind of yeah, because you're going to end up with flat spots. Yeah. You know. But <laughs> the the double loop lace, you know, it it covers up a lot of. Uh, stuff like that. You can have a little flat spots mm -hmm. that you will never see because the outside edge is going to be the same shape as yep. the edge. Well, the and project. especially with this situation, we're going to shove a pillow in this and we're going to kind of make it all funky anyway. So this yeah. one isn't, you know, yeah. if you had a couple flat spots here, there. All righty, guys. So let's see here. Everybody's having an argument about what the hip part of the cow might be because Dean doesn't like my hip leather. Mm -hmm. Dean, nobody asked you your opinion <laughs> on my leather. <laughs> if I want to use shiny, fun leather, I will. No. Um, I'm just kidding. Kind of. <laughs> what the hip? Why don't you tell him how you really feel? <laughs> uh, yeah. So he, he called this hip leather. I mean, like, oh, like, like. Not hip, hip. But yeah, like, but. Cool. Like, like, cool. Yeah. Or like fashionable leather. That's what I'm going to. Current fashions. Could you call it fat leather? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's laughing. Fat it's leather. the fat leather. <laughs> we could. Um, all righty. Well, guys, it is 1230. So I feel like this is what we're going to do. On Friday, we will be back. Um, Jeff will show us how to start this type of lacing. Again, the pillow will be almost done. We will show you guys how to do a splice in the two colors. And we'll have a small project um, where we can show you how to start and stop and do the corner um, yeah. in something. We'll have a probably smaller than this, but because otherwise this, I, I don't. I made one. Oh, look at this. We're just going to do this cute little card case right here. So we'll show you guys how to double loop lace this in two-toned on Friday. <laughs> we will finish the pillow and it will just be all about two-toned lacing, which is going to be just a fabulous time. Right. So we might have the pillow already stuffed in there. Oops. Yes, we'll probably have the pillow in there. I was so, listening to you, and, and I he, forgot to switch. You sure did. Uh -huh. You really have to pay attention to this double loop lace. Yeah. No oh, first dear, time. Fine. Won't be the last. <laughs> I'm going to give you a hard time because um, zippers. Zippers. Because you've earned the hard time. So, all right, <laughs> folks. You've earned it. Uh, you earned it, which is fine. We enjoy having you. I don't know what the live would be if Dean weren't asking about zippers um, or zippers or glue. That's the other one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So we didn't have to answer that. We talked about a different kind of Oh, glue. yeah. We already talked about the glue. We today. did. Yeah. Uh -huh. We talked about glue today. We just, this is the first zipper conversation we've had. I did. I, yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> All righty. So we'll be back on Friday. Um, for those of you that join us for live shopping, of course, uh, at least I will be here. I don't know if Tony will be back feeling better yet tomorrow or not, but I will be here with whomever will help me to sell you leather tomorrow at two on Facebook. If you want to come join us for live shopping and then we'll be back on Friday, central time at 11 to finish up this pillow and to go more thoroughly into the two-toned double loop lacing. So, we'll All see right. you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. See you guys. Good night, everybody. <laughs>